So I have a presentation for us. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, here we go. Hopefully everyone can see and hear me and see my presentation. I'm very excited to share this webinar with you today because this is a topic that I'm super passionate about. And there's two reasons that I wanted to kick this off with. One is that I've really seen how having an online business and working online can completely transform your lifestyle. So I find it very empowering and very exciting to do business online. And then second of all, I know with the shift because of COVID-19, we can't go through this presentation without referencing it. So many of you are forced into bringing their, your business online and figuring out ways to transition your products to online and digital products. So I'm very passionate about being able to support people throughout this process as well. So a little bit about my online journey. I want to kick it off with some credibility building. I think it's very important that if you are going to invest your time learning from someone and take what they say as the word and as the truth, it's someone who has achieved something that you're looking to achieve and someone who has done this fairly recently. I think there's a lot of really, really successful entrepreneurs who have achieved a level of success in business, but they did it such a long time ago and maybe they're so far removed from the process. So it's, it's hard for them to be able to reflect on kind of those like nuances or what it actually takes to utilize some of these skills. So in terms of my story, I'm very upfront and open about the fact that it actually started as a love story. So three years ago, this was 2017, I was in a long distance relationship and I was also working in software sales for a startup here in Toronto, Canada. That's where I'm conducting this webinar from. And the company I was working for, it was a really cool product, cool culture, it was fun, but they had no work from home policy whatsoever. So it was getting so frustrating and so expensive going back and forth to visit my partner. He was in San Francisco, I was in Toronto. And so my initial motivation was actually just to make that relationship work. So I started off by offering freelance consulting services 100% remotely online. As part of this journey, I launched the Freedom Lifestyle podcast. I realized that I didn't know everything I wanted to know yet. So I really launched my podcast as a way to network and to learn from people and to have conversations with people that I wouldn't normally have had the opportunity to. But what was great is I've actually generated four revenue streams from my podcast. Something we'll talk about in this presentation is how you can monetize something like that for your business. Another really relevant experience I've had is I used to teach in-person workshops in Toronto. Every month I would teach a workshop um, here in Toronto on how you can launch a podcast. And six months ago, I actually brought that content online and it's a completely online course. It's available on Fiverr Learn, their learning platform. And it's great because that's actually a passive income stream for me now. So I did the work once and now anyone can buy it and take the course from anywhere at any time on demand and I generate some passive income. Where I'm at today in 2020, it's become a completely sustainable lifestyle. It started off with just offering consulting services, but I've now launched various digital products, some active, some passive, and I'm totally taking advantage. I'm being able to work from anywhere. And in 2019, I actually traveled for six months. So what can you expect from this presentation today? We're going to first level set on what's happening in the global economic climate that we're in because of COVID-19. Every country I saw, it's a very diverse audience today. I'm sure there's small nuances in terms of when you're allowed back in business and what's changing, but in general, non-essential businesses have closed. It's forced a lot of entrepreneurs to pivot. We're gonna talk about your customer journey. So what is the process that someone goes through from discovering that you even exist to considering buying from you and then actually purchasing? We're gonna go through six very specific sales and marketing channels and tactics that you can utilize for selling your knowledge online and marketing it. And then we have some Q and A. So I just wanna pause there for a second and kind of set some expectation about my style. I've put a ton of effort into this presentation and it's not entry level information. 
So if you're somebody who has been in business, online business for a while, and you're wondering if these concepts are going to be super general, absolutely not. We have a mix of high level information as well as a ton of pro tips and actual hacks, as you might say, that I've been using over the last several years that I use every day to be successful. So stick with the presentation. I know not every example will apply to you, um, but stay curious and stay open. I promise you'll learn quite a bit. So the COVID reality, this is the situation that we're in. If you're watching this presentation from the future, it's the last day of April, 2020, and most businesses have closed, which means that if you have relied on face-to-face -face clients for your business, for any type of industry you're in, you've been forced to pivot, you've been forced to switch how you do business, and you've maybe even been forced to launch a new product completely. This is actually an opportunity. So while it's very scary and it happened aggressively and quickly and none of us really were prepared, this is an opportunity for two reasons. One is you now have a global audience. You are no longer restricted to marketing and selling your services within your zip code or your postal code. You can now sell to anybody. And then two, you're not starting from scratch. There's people like me who've been doing this for years. I've been doing it for three years. There's people who've been doing it for much longer than me even. So there's already this amazing technological foundation that you can utilize. There's softwares uh, supporting entrepreneurs who are online entrepreneurs that are available. So you actually have the opportunity to take advantage of this and not start from scratch. Third is your response. I'll leave it with this. It is time to pivot, not pause. I think when we first heard the news of COVID-19, a lot of us just stopped. You know, you pause the social media account, you close your store, you close your business or your services, and you said, I'm just going to wait this out and see what happens. It's projecting that this is going to be a while. And so it's time to pivot. It's time to accept the situation. It's time to get innovative. So let's talk about how you actually bring your business online. Most of this presentation is going to focus on the sales and marketing aspect, how you can do this without spending a ton of money. That really is my style. I'm a scrappy entrepreneur. I like to do things with less and I like to figure out how I can um, do things myself, frankly, which allows me to, to pass on a lot of these learnings to you. But just to level set, here's the different ways you can actually bring your existing face-to-face -face way of doing business online. There's three I'm going to talk about video conferencing. This is what we're doing right now. We're on a free tool for the most part called Zoom. It's amazing. It's definitely my platform of choice. This is really great for one-on-one -on -one consults. Maybe you are a naturopath or a nutritionist or a therapist, and you've been conducting your business in person. You know, people would come and meet with you either in your a commercial place or maybe you had a, a spare office in your apartment or your house and you were meeting with people in person, you can now do that same one-on-one -on -one consult online. Maybe you're a fitness instructor and you're doing group presentations or group instructions, you know, you can use these types of tools to, you know, do group sessions such as what we're doing today or webinar, which is when you might want to have presentations as part of your the information that you're sharing. This is really popular with like real estate agents or accountants who want to get people to know about their services and see them really as an expert. So they conduct a free webinar to teach people some of the basics and then of course sell them on hiring them and working with them to actually do their core business. Online courses, this is number two. This is an example of something that I've done recently to create passive income. There's two different options you have if you're gonna create an online course. So one would be like actually hosting it on your own type of website. So this would be like an experience that's completely yours. You would own the www URL and someone would go there and it would be completely branded and it would just be all about you and your course. You'd be responsible for driving all the traffic to it and marketing it and you'd pay a monthly fee to the host. So the website where your online course lives in order for you to sell that course. So that's option one. Option two is leveraging a marketplace. So there's actually a difference. A marketplace is essentially a website that's done a really great job at promoting themselves, something like Udemy or Skillshare, where they have thousands and thousands of people every single week go onto their marketplaces and look for courses to take. So what would be great about that is it could be totally passive. You don't have to market anything at all. You just put your online course on there and then you would do a revenue share. So the host would take a cut of every sale and you would take a cut. 
So those are kind of your two options. I've chosen to do Podia for my online course as well as Fiverr Learn. So I've experienced both. Um, and there's pros and cons, as I've said. Kajabi would be like the most expensive and the highest featured available one and then Teachable is on the lower end. Online membership, this is your third option. So this is when you would essentially offer gated content for various membership tiers. So someone would pay a monthly subscription fee to access premium content for you. I've seen musicians do this really well who have had to cancel all of their festivals and their in-person shows and need to figure out how they're gonna generate revenue where you know, they have a Patreon site where for $3 a month, you know, you'll get this. For $20 a month, you'll get our newest song. For $50 a month, you'll get this merch. You know, we'll send you a t-shirt. You'll get a live recording session where we're gonna release, you'll be the first one to hear our first song. So there's different ways you can experiment with that. I've also seen this done really well in the fitness and health space, as well as people who are teaching. So these are three different ways you can bring your existing face-to-face -face business online and again, in the follow-up email, the services guide that Natasha is going to send out goes into a lot of detail about that. So there's three foundational business concepts that we're going to go through before I talk about some tactics. These might be a refresher for you. That's okay. You should constantly be rethinking these and pulse checking as your business grows and as things change and as you get more information from your market. So the first exercise is who is your ideal customer? And you wanna do this because if you know who your ideal customer is, you then decide where you're gonna market and where you're gonna spend your energy. Especially if you're like a solo online entrepreneur or maybe you're a small business owner with a couple contractors, you can't afford to be everywhere all of the time. So you wanna be more strategic and target where your ideal customer is. So this is a fun little exercise to figure out who this person is, get super creative with it. This is part of your homework. Reflect on your previous customers from the last year or so. Who are the most profitable? Who came back, purchased multiple purchases, told a friend about you? Who is the easiest to serve? You know, your definition of easy could be many different things. It could be just someone who is fun to serve or someone who got it and they didn't require a lot of like micro maintenance or managing. Think about who that ideal customer is Give them a name, give them a picture, give them a gender, try to figure out what their traits are, values are, have fun with this exercise and really nail down who that ideal customer is, not who you can sell to, who the ideal person to sell to is. The second foundational concept we're gonna be talking about is your customer online journey. This is a sales and marketing funnel. Again, you may have seen this many times, or maybe this is the first time you're seeing this concept. So essentially what this is, is the journey that someone will go through when they first discover that your business exists, they become aware of you. That's the top of the funnel. Then they're considering purchasing from you. Maybe they're comparing you to a competitor. They're comparing you to not even doing anything at all. They're comparing you to just doing it themselves. They purchase, you actually like ship them the service in terms of you conduct the business. They decide if they're going to be loyal. So are they going to purchase from you again? Are they going to, are you going to retain that customer? And then are they going to be an advocate, which is when this whole funnel starts over again and they actually refer other business to you. So it is cyclical. And the concept here is that as you're doing different activities to get awareness of your business or to sell someone or deciding whether something is worth your time, really think about where in the funnel that person is. Do they already know about you? Then maybe your message is gonna be a little bit different than someone who's seeing a Facebook ad about you for the first time. That's something to think about. The third concept is that people buy from people that they know, that they like, and that they trust, okay? And since you're now selling your expertise, so many of you, your personal brand is gonna be so, 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 so important. So really think about how you can create awareness you exist, but also make people like you and wanna do business with you as well as trust you and really see you as that expert and worthy of their money and worthy of their attention, essentially. So those are the three concepts. Now let's get into more of the workshop aspect of this presentation where we're gonna dive deep into some specific strategies, some specific marketing channels that you should be thinking about for your new online business or for your existing online business that you're ready to double down on and you have more time right now, so you're putting more effort in. 
We're going to talk about storytelling, the importance of getting a narrative about yourself and being able to tell it. We'll talk about community building, essentially networking online and being part of various communities. We'll talk about building an email list, why you should build an email list, how you should build an email list, social media, which I think we all know a little bit about social media, but we'll talk about how this specifically relates to your online business content marketing. This is involving blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos, putting out like eBooks or even a free webinar like is this, and then PR and media. So how you can actually get earned media is another term where you get newspapers or blogs or uh, podcasters to actually have you on their show or feature your story and business. Let's talk about your story. And I'd be curious, kind of, let's make this a little bit more engaging and interactive. So of those three business concepts that we kind of went through, so the marketing funnel, the no like, and trust, the ideal customer, you know, are these things that you're thinking about right now? Are there th things that you've done before? Maybe put into the chat, like kind of where you're at in this journey. If you've already done this a bunch of times, it's the first time you're hearing it and kind of see where everybody is at in this journey as I continue going through the presentation. Every single website needs an about us section. It needs a story and you need to be able to tell it. It also needs your picture. I've actually consulted with a lot of um, like therapists and people that are conducting service-based businesses and doing consulting. And really it's, it's so much about them, right? It's they're, they're not face to face, but they're face to face in an online concept. And you should really have your photo up on the homepage of your website. Um, you want to really showcase who you are and get comfortable putting yourself out there. I know I've been on a journey myself of being okay with that, to being comfortable with it, to now I just accept it's part of doing business online and kind of advocating for myself and selling myself a bit. So when you're creating the about section of your website and you're telling your story, these are the types of things that you want to include in it. So why did you start your business and when? Is there an experience that happened to you that really shaped why you're in this industry? Perhaps you were touched by someone who taught you this or serviced you in this way and you you were so grateful about the transformation you received that you were so inspired to now conduct business yourself that way. Or perhaps a challenging moment happened in your life where you really realized you needed to make a change and so you started going in this new direction. Be personal here, tell that story about why you're even in this business to show that you're intrinsically motivated. You're not just looking to make money, you are motivated by the style of um, opportunity and the transformation and the impact you're making. Your qualifications, so maybe you have different certification, different expertise, specific schooling that you've received to showcase that you are someone that they should um, listen to and conduct business with. What's your unique approach? So do you have a unique way of servicing your customer? Maybe there's uh, a, a unique style of your, your fitness that you do where you're really high energy and you're super engaging and you play like really fun music. Like showcase that this is your differentiator and your way of doing business. I think in a crowded market, that's so, so, so important. Let's talk about your approach. Personal interests, don't be scared to showcase things that you're interested in and things that you value outside of work, as well as a link to your social media. So this is a really great place for to have a call to action of, you know, connect with me online and throw a link to your social media pages, which we'll talk about which one's right for you. So the second sales and marketing channel that you want to be thinking about is community building. This is also known as networking online and actually going out there and building strategic relationships. And you can do this through a few different ways. So one would be Facebook groups. Facebook groups are so amazing, especially for people who are like graphic designers or video animators or website developers. There's so many Facebook groups related to like freelance or gig work or um, people in business who are just looking to outsource the project. And this is a great place for you to be when these opportunities 
opportunities happen. So definitely be part of some of those and don't feel like you need to always start the conversation and you're like, what am I even going to say? How am I going to get noticed in these Facebook groups? There's conversations happening every day. When you go to join a Facebook group before you even uh, request to join, it'll say like how many posts per day or per week or per month. So a lot of them are very, very active which means you can just comment on an existing discussion and you can just jump in on the bandwagon and add your advice, be helpful, um, and just kind of make your brand known that way. These are all always great places to include an exclusive offer. So perhaps you're offering a discount for a particular community or you're offering some type of freebie. This is a great place to say, hey, you know, I'm part of this community as a thank you for this space and, you know, this online community that's helped me so much. I've created this offer for this group. It's also a great place to do market research. I've seen a ton of people um, saying, hey, I'm thinking of launching this new product or this new service. Can you answer this question for me? Or can you fill out this short survey? I'm conducting some market research. So it's a great way to kind of get that free information that'll help shape some business decisions. The second would be joining a paid membership. These are often referred to as masterminds. This is essentially when it's more um, targeted networking and premium content. Um, so sorry, there's paid memberships and there's masterminds. So a paid membership would be when you're paying like a monthly fee to be part of an online community. So many of them are industry related, which could make a lot of sense for you if you're looking to partner with complementary people. Um, for example, maybe you're in an industry where someone offers a service that does not compete with you, but they have a clientele that you'd want to, and that'd be a good fit for your business. Networking and paid memberships are a great way for you to make those collaborations that are mutually beneficial. Um, so it's a lot more targeted networking, as well as people who typically pay for them. Um, they might be a bit more serious about conducting business and open to maximizing the, re the return that they're getting for this membership. So the third option is a mastermind, which is what I was meaning by, by that. And this is more like an accountability group. So this is where it's a group of people that are coming together strictly to support each other, to hold each other accountable in this online business. You know, maybe in this chat right now, you can, you know, you can comment like, hey, I'm looking for an accountability buddy, or I'm looking to join a mastermind, or I have a mastermind if you are someone who does X. I think right now I'm looking, we have like over 200 people, <laughs> no pressure on this webinar right now at this given time, use this chat and use these connections. We're all going through this digital transformation together and really bringing our businesses online. So maybe you can find someone today who you can support each other through this journey. Share resources, share referrals. There's a lot of business to go around. It's about making those strategic partnerships. So that's how you would utilize community building and doing some online networking. The third is email lists and the value of collecting an email address. So we're going to talk about why you want to be collecting email addresses. And then we're going to talk about how you actually do it and some hacks that I found to be super, super effective. So why do you want to collect someone's email address and why is this so important? Well, emails are actually considered the king of marketing because they actually have the highest sales conversion rate and ROI related uh, when compared to other digital channels. So compared to like a social media post or a blog post, you know, sending, having someone's email and giving them a targeted email has really high open rates and click through rates. It's something you own. So unlike social media, which Facebook a couple years ago, it, everyone was really impacted by, by Facebook's change. At first they said, everyone create free Facebook pages, get everyone to go like your free Facebook page. And when you do posts, all of the people who like your page will, will now see it. Well, several years ago, Facebook decided to switch to a pay to play model where in order for those people who opted in to seeing your posts, you now need to pay for that. You now need to boost your posts to your own likes. So these types of experiences have really showcased why it's so important to own email addresses and own your contacts. It's something that you own. It is not impacted by the algorithm. So you don't have to worry like, you know, depending on the time I post this or the day of the week, you know, or who else is posting that day, will it even be seen? Do I have to get a bunch of comments on it for it to boost? It's not impacted by the algorithms. So that's why you want to build an email list. How you build an email list. 
every online entrepreneur and every online business owner needs a freebie. They need a free opt-in, which essentially is a very common experience. You probably even did it today. You probably gave Fiverr your email in, um, with the understanding that you would get to attend this free webinar and Fiverr now has your email, right? <laughs> and they're going to promote various other events to you, or maybe their services. And that's the deal and the agreement that you made. This is happening all the time online. This can be in the form of, Hey, here's my free ebook, or here's my, you know, free blog post about 10 tips about this. Or if you get this, um, you know, you'll get 10% off your first consulting session with me. If you sign up for my email newsletter, so think about what kind of free opt-ins that you can have, that you can have on your website, that you can either push paid ads to in exchange for collecting someone's email address. This again goes back to content marketing. Why am I gonna put out free content? Well, you wanna collect those emails so that you can send them more targeted uh, sales offers. Websites and quizzes. This is something that's um, very buzzworthy right now. There's a website called Interact and it allows you to make really fun quizzes that you can put on your website that might be related to your industry. So let's say you're a real estate agent and you want to create a quiz about um, what type of first time home buyer are you? I'm kind of making this up as I go right now. And you have various questions for them to answer like a yard is important to me one to five, or it's very important to me that I have a place that I can grow into over the next five years. Like you do like a fun little quiz that someone can fill out in exchange for your email address. It makes them feel like this experience is very personalized to them. It's a very fun and interactive experience. And you can use this website called interact to create a fun little quiz on your website in exchange for someone to give you, give you their email address. I have two pro tips. I've seen a lot of people use Zoom over the last couple of months, a lot of fitness instructors, for example, who are using Zoom to offer free classes. I think that's amazing. Thank you so much. I've definitely been taking advantage. What I'm seeing done well, though, is ones where you have to opt in ahead of time. So before you actually get to click on the Zoom and see the free class, you can turn on a feature. It's not the default on Zoom where they have to provide their name and their email address. And you might be thinking, well, I'm already offering it to my email list. Why do I need to collect their email address again? Well, a very common behavior, especially when it's free content like this webinar or a fitness class is to send the link to a friend of yours who would be a good fit for. So for example, I did a fitness class a couple days ago. I sent it to one of my best friends and she now didn't give her email address to that person because there was no opt-in. So the same way you might have sent this webinar to other people who, hey, I know you're starting an online business too, or you're shifting online, you know, having that pre-registration is really helpful and it takes two seconds to do and people are totally comfortable with it. They're getting something free. The second pro tip is to use an integration for your event, right? So let's say you're hosting a webinar or you're doing some type of online event and you're going to create an event bright listing for it. You can actually have an automation. MailChimp is where majority of people send their actual email newsletters. It's called a CRM. Um, you might pick a different option, but MailChimp is what I always use and I highly recommend it. It's super user friendly. You can have the integration set up. Someone, someone signs up for your webinar or gets an online ticket, whether it's paid or free, they automatically get added to your email list. So that's something that you can do all the time. I'm hosting a free event tonight, speed networking for podcasters. It's free, but I'm collecting all of their email addresses, which is going to allow me to have a really amazing list of targeted people, people who have podcasts that I can then promote, you know, my podcasting course to, or the level two of that, that I might be releasing soon. So that's email lists and how and why you need to be building them. We're now going to talk about social media. This is definitely going to be more of like a little bit of a workshop here. I have a matrix. Um, so sit tight. I have lots of different examples. Definitely take some notes about some content you can be creating, but I'm going to start with this stat. Only 20% of your social media content should actually be sales related. And this number scares people because they're like, well, if I'm not going to be just selling my stuff and talking about my business, what the heck am I going to be talking about? And there's a difference between created content and curated content. Curated content is simply when you reshare something that's helpful or related to your industry or in some form. Created content is when you actually come up with something brand new, but uh, it's totally okay for you to share someone else's work and comment on it, but only 20% should be sales related. Okay. 
So my pro tip for social media is every single Sunday, I use a tool called Planoly. I've also used Hootsuite in the past where I schedule my social media posts. So do not think like, okay, I know I'm gonna be on these platforms. I know I wanna be active, but that's super destructive. You know, I'm in the middle of like client sessions. I'm actually conducting my business. I don't have time to be tweeting or posting on Instagram all the time. Schedule them. There's free schedulers and they will save you a lot of time and it'll allow you to do something once and kind of have that passive outcome, which as you, as you get more into the online space, people are all about how do you get paid when you sleep and how do you create passive income and have that residual income. So here's the matrix I've designed for you. Going back to that concept of people buy from people they know, people they like, and people they trust. And then on the left, we have the four main platforms that people are primarily on when conducting online business. I know there's TikTok and there's all these other cool platforms and you know, you should be thinking about them too and watching them, but here's kind of like the core four and here's some ideas of content you can be creating for each platform to showcase that you're likable, trustable, and to build awareness that you even exist. And again, these aren't sales related things. So that 20% should be the easiest part, which is your offer and promoting it on these channels. So let's talk about Instagram first. Instagram is much more of a visual platform. You know, it's video, it's photo, there are some captions, but this is really great for, um, I've seen a lot of like fitness instructors go online and offering free classes. Maybe you're someone who is teaching um, different concepts and you're showcasing your authority. Just know that this platform is much more visual, a lot of like videos and in Instagram stories, um, less so than the other platforms, which might be about longer form content. So Instagram, how can you get people to know about you? How can you increase your visibility on Instagram? Well, this is going to be really great for maybe some of the conversations that you're making right now. I can see the chat going off. I can't actually see what you're saying, but I can see some messages coming through. So maybe you're, you've collaborated with someone today, you're in a mastermind group, or you've met someone in a Facebook group who offers a complimentary service to you, which again is something that doesn't compete with what you're offering, but their clientele would be someone that you would want to be able to sell to and you'd be a great fit for. So you can do the same thing on Instagram. You can come up with some type of campaign where you cross promote with each other, where you talk about each other's services or businesses. You say, hey, this is someone that's amazing. You should definitely go follow them. Maybe you even you know, take it to the next level and collaborate on some type of giveaway where they have to follow both of you. Figure out ways for you to collaborate with complimentary people to grow your account and grow your visibility. Instagram's great for that because it's so engaging and visual and you can do great photos and run contests. To increase your visibility on Twitter, this is a platform that's really about starting conversations. It's about sharing information. It's shorter form content. It's short and sweet. Um, but something really great about Twitter is the hashtags. So I see this really great for people who are in like B2B sales, who are used to going to conferences, or used to conducting business in person. I saw a few of you identified that in the pre-form of that's you know, how you're hurting the most. Well, what's really great is a lot of events, I used to be in sales too. And what I would do is we'd go to a conference, I'd find out the hashtag for the conference, and I'd be in the conference, half listening, half following the hashtag and liking people and following people and hopping in on conversations. So you can use hashtags if there's specific industry events or things happening, or perhaps there's something in the news that happened related to your industry that's very um, provocative or interesting, or it's getting a lot of buzz, you can hop on that hashtag and create some tweets and add that hashtag and be part of that conversation to help people see you. LinkedIn, a great way for people to, to find out about you and to see you is through an article feature. If you're already writing blogs on your website, it can be as easy as copy and paste every time and create a LinkedIn article about that. And you can say at the top, you know, this article was first seen here and you can link back to your website. Um, but the point of having a LinkedIn article is you can comment and tag different people in the article. Let's say you're referencing people in the industry that um, you'd love for them to share with their audience or you've shared a quote with them. It's a really great way for you to tag people and it'll then show up on their feed and it, um, the algorithm works really well when it comes to the articles. So maybe a LinkedIn articles for you. This platform is really great for people who are, again, doing B2B business, but people who are targeting professionals. So maybe you're an accountant or um, a certain type of coach 
where your clientele is predominantly a professional, go back to that online customer profile. Where are they? What do they do? Their number one social media platform might be LinkedIn. They might already be using that platform every day. Maybe they don't have time for Instagram. It's not a priority based on their uh, their profession. And so LinkedIn would be really good for you if you're targeting professionals or you're doing B2B type of online business work. Third would be Facebook. Facebook's kind of available for everybody. I kind of alluded to the Facebook pages not being a great source anymore if you don't want to have any kind of paid strategy. Um, but Facebook groups are amazing, which we also talked about prior. So again, joining these industry Facebook groups or joining industry groups where your ideal customer might hang out, um, I think that's really great. Let's say you're a musician and you have a certain type of style, a certain type of genre. There's so many groups for people who like that style of music. Be in that group. Let them know when you released your latest track or let them know about different offers you have. Maybe you have that online membership site, but utilize these groups are an amazing tool. I have one. I will include the link at the end of here. You should check out mine. Okay, so we, we've talked about how people can know you. Let's talk about how we can get people to like you, okay? How you can really showcase your values and your personality. So Instagram has an amazing Instagram stories feature, which is really great video based. You know, I did a video style update today on my Instagram about like, hey, I'm preparing for the webinar, match my shirt with my art. <laughs> maybe you noticed that, maybe you didn't, but you know, it's a great way to go behind the scenes of what you're doing today. I've been showcasing to people who follow me, like I'm preparing for this webinar. I'm super excited. If you want to join, I'm letting them know what a day in the life is like to do business with me. You know, my cat's in the apartment, hopefully she's quiet and just kind of talking a little bit about what it's like behind the scenes to really get people to know that I'm much more than just a marketing consultant or a podcast coach. I'm a human being and we have these similar interests that just make it more fun to conduct business with people that you know, like, and trust. So for Twitter, a great way for you to showcase your values and make people like you is social media days. So things like, you know, World Donut Day or Earth Day or just fun things that are social media events. You can Google like social media calendar and you'll see every date where there's something funny. Um, you know, Women's International Day. That's not funny. That's empowering. <laughs> But you could figure out what those days are and then do a post on Twitter and add that hashtag or just post about it and showcase like this is something you're interested in or something you're passionate about, whether it's philanthropy or whether it's just something that's like more fun and entertaining like National Donut Day, which is a thing. LinkedIn, how do you get people to like you? So again, you can comment on trending topics. So very similar to the social media day on LinkedIn, when you go in on the right, you'll see all the trending topics for the day. Some of them are super industry related. Some of them are general interest topics. You can share them. You can talk about them. You can weigh in on the conversation. Um, don't be afraid to be opinionated. I think that if you're just going to say everything that everybody wants to hear, it's going to be really hard to stand out. So don't don't be scared to actually like weigh in on a conversation and be like, I agree with this. Here's why, or I don't agree with this. And here's why, um, and showcase your values. That's what makes people like you. On Facebook, you can get people to like you by sharing news articles you're passionate about. So very similar to like a social media day, but this could be in the sense of various articles that are happening, feel good stories, um, things that are happening in your local community, maybe projects that you're involved with and just talking about those and showcasing some of your lifestyle outside of business and really what you value. Okay, the third one, this is all about building your authority. And this is so, so, so important with people who are service providers, who are experts in their fields, they're nutritionists, they're therapists, they're coaches, you're a tutor, real estate agent, accountant, um, anybody who is looked at as an expert in order for people to pay you to showcase that expertise to them and teach them something and be an advisor, you need to prove it, right? Especially in a crowded space, which is online. You know, you might've felt like in your community, these last several years of doing business, it was easy to differentiate yourself, but now you're online and you're like, how, how do I differentiate myself against all the other accountants around tax time? And how do I do that? Well, we've talked about no one like, let's talk about trust and how people can actually see you as an authority. 
So on Instagram, something that I do is I share mini trainings. So I'll come up with a topic. I try to do like once them once a week, but it's realistically like once every two weeks. And I post a one minute or so, maybe sometimes two minutes, little video of me teaching something that's related to my industry. So for example, a lot of people are forced to now podcast at home. You know, let's say that's my expertise. And I create a little mini training about how you can record really amazing podcast audio quality from home. And it's free content. I'm not looking to get paid for it. I'm just showcasing like, hey, I know about this thing too. And I'm doing it in a really like snackable, engaging way on Instagram stories. You can do that in your industry by like sharing something valuable and giving like a mini training on something. On Twitter, you can do this simply by retweeting industry articles. So again, going back to that curation aspect, you don't always have to create something brand new. You can just jump on the bandwagon of other articles related to your industry. So if there's things that are happening that are changes in your industry or relevant, you know, retweet that article. There's a, a, a button on Twitter where you can go retweet with comment. I definitely recommend that. If you retweet it, it's just gonna give more exposure to the original person. But if you go repeat with comment, your thoughts will be above that actual article and you can weigh in on the conversation. So a great way to show like you're an expert, look at all the stuff I'm reading. Here's my thoughts, here's my favorite insight. Sometimes I'll just like copy and paste one of my favorite insights from the article and, and put it in my comment. LinkedIn, getting people to trust you, ask for testimonials. Think right now, maybe you have more time on your hands because businesses change and you're pivoting. Can you go back to some of those ideal customers, people who were super profitable, who were loyal, who were an advocate for you and referred you to new business, who you know are happy? Is this a good time to collect some testimonials? You can collect written testimonials, you can collect video testimonials, but LinkedIn is an amazing place where you get people to um, advocate and say online a couple sentences, hey, I loved working with this person, here's why a pro tip, make it super easy for them and offer to like write some of it or give them some bullet points about uh, talking points that you want them to reference in the testimonial. I don't think I've ever said no to someone who's asked me for that. And I'll often be like, hey, can you write me something quick? Cause people are busy. So make it convenient for them. Final thing here is media. And we're gonna talk about how you actually get featured in the media in number six. We're on number four, we're just wrapping up social media. Is on Facebook to get people to trust you and see you as an authority, share media that you're featured in. If you are in a blog, even if it's like a blog with 10 other people and you're quoted once, share that. Most people aren't even gonna read it. <laughs> They're just gonna say, read it and trust that you're like, hey, it was so cool to be featured in this. So even if it's a small part in a play, as someone would say, share that and be comfortable with pumping your own tires and advocating for yourself and um, showcasing how awesome you are. It's super uncomfortable, I've been there, but it's a reality of doing business. And most people are super inspired um, to see you doing it and killing it and that you're getting the recognition that I know that you deserve. So I'm going to talk about content marketing. I've alluded to podcasting a few times in this session. I have a podcast that I've been running for three years. I also teach people how to launch a podcast, but I've also advised people on things like blogs. I've written for blogs in my, uh, my freelance career. So I know why people have a blog and the value that they have. Also YouTube channels. I know that's very popular and something you might be thinking about. Um, free courses or eBooks. Again, going back to that have a free opt-in, a free offer where someone can actually um, you know, give you their email address in exchange for something. This is what we're gonna talk about right now. Let's make this interactive. Why don't you hop in the chat and showcase or maybe comment on any type of content marketing you're currently doing. Do you have a podcast already? Are you thinking of launching a podcast? Are you thinking of creating an eBook or some type of opt-in? Let me take a sip, second and have a sip of water and give you guys a second to share what you're working on. Okay, content marketing. 
Why do people invest in content marketing? You're probably thinking, I'm an expert in this. I should be getting paid for this. I usually only interact with my customers when they come for an in-person session with me and I get a, a hefty hourly rate. Why on earth would I now offer this free content? Well, again, going back to that marketing funnel where you need to put people in the top of it so people are aware of you and then remembering that concept of no like and trust. So touching on the no aspect, you want to build an audience. You want to get as many people at the top of your funnel so they can start deciding that consideration stage. They're going to just, they're going to be thinking about whether they should do business with you, but they can't decide if they're going to do business with you if they don't know you exist. So content marketing, while it requires time, it requires energy and it requires sometimes you've given away your expertise for free a little bit is very effective in building an audience. It's also effective in nurturing an existing audience. So let's say you had someone who purchased from you a couple years ago, never came back. Well, maybe they kind of forgot you existed by having a regular podcast or a blog or something where you're regularly putting yourself out there. They're going to keep you top of mind and they're going to remember you exist either to be an advocate for you or to become a repeat customer. So building an audience and nurturing an audience. You want to build an audience because you need to grow brand awareness. You need to let people know that you exist. You are now selling globally. You're now selling to everybody. Building an audience is really great for networking. So this relates to specifically having like a podcast or a YouTube channel or any type of blog where you might be interviewing someone. This gives you an opportunity to reach out to people that you would have no business reaching out to. It gives you an opportunity to say, Hey, you're so awesome in the industry. You know, can I showcase your work or can I tell your story? Most people are going to be pretty humbled by that and say yes. And what's great is they're going to share hopefully not always, but most of the time share that podcast or that blog where they're featured in or that YouTube interview or that Facebook live interview you did with them. And now you're going to be able to market that you exist to all of their network. So you want to network so that you can access their audience so that you can build relationships. You can have someone on your podcast and that can be a relationship you have for the rest of your life. And you want to network in that way. Um, but it's also a great way for you to network in the sense of positioning yourself as an authority. So one of the unexpected revenue streams for me with having a podcast was actually paid speaking gigs, which might be something that you might be thinking of. And right now it might be paid online speaking gigs, <laughs> but it's a great way for you to create a revenue channel. If you are an expert in a topic and the best way for you to showcase your expertise is to just start talking about it. Don't wait until someone gives you the opportunity to tell your story and showcase how amazing you are at um, creating content. Just start creating it yourself. And by positioning yourself as an authority, you're going to open yourself up for all different opportunities. We're going to talk about media in a second, um, but specifically opportunities like potentially paid speaking gigs, consulting opportunities for your business and getting people to really trust you. So it's also important for nurturing an audience. So you want to do content marketing so that you can connect with your audience more intimately. Something like a podcast or a YouTube video is such a humanizing thing where you're able to ad lib a lot more than something like a blog post, let's say, or even something like an ebook. Even right now, like I have, I'm adding in a lot more words and a lot more not pieces of information that are just kind of coming into my head that's showcasing who I am that I wouldn't have been able to translate in just a written piece of content, right? And so these types of content, they're, it's a great way for you to connect with your audience and your existing customers more intimately, for you to humanize yourself, move them through that funnel so that you can build that loyalty and build that advocacy so that they keep you top of mind, they know, they like, and they trust you. Last concept is PRN media. So why you want to get PR and media? So the benefits, and then I'm going to give you some pro tips on how to pitch. I've gotten myself a lot of amazing media as well as I've been a freelance publicist for brands in the past where that was literally my job to pitch like dozens of publications a day to get them featured. So in terms of the benefits, again, it builds that know, like, and trust. It's top of the funnel. It's awareness that you even exist. It helps build your SEO. So that's a whole other webinar, but in a very simple term, 
the way that you become more visible on Google. So when someone Googles something related to your industry, maybe they're looking for a nutritionist, maybe they're looking for um, a real estate agent, maybe they're looking for some type of coach and they Google something related to your field, in order for you to actually come on that first page, one of the main use it, one of the main tools that um, Google uses is how many backlinks are pointing to your website. So how many other websites have included a link to your website on their website? So by getting PR and by getting media and getting featured in these different blogs, it might seem like, hey, no sale come from, came from it. I had this long interview and nothing even came from it. No one used the discount code I offered them. You just earned yourself a backlink and backlinks are super, super important. Even when I get asked to do free speaking gigs now, because I don't always get paid to do stuff, I'll ask for a backlink to my website. I'll say no problem, but when you do the spe speaker profile, can you include a link back to my website? So PR is a great way for you to build that SEO and it has a snowball effect. So if you do like six months of dedicated, I'm going to get backlinks, I'm going to get some media and PR and position myself as an expert in this topic, you start to have a snowball effect where people come to you. These media reporters and people who are in these industries, they're super, super busy and they don't have time to do like a proper research and audit of who all the players are in this industry. So let's say it's, um, it's an article about, you know, different supplements that you can incorporate into your diet um, for summer and you're a nutritionist or a naturopath or someone who's in the health space and you get quoted with your recommendation. Well, the next time someone's looking to find different naturopaths or nutritionists to include in their article, they're either going to reuse that exact quote and not even reach out to you, or they're going to message you and say like, Hey, um, you know, I saw you're an expert in this. You no, know, can we have you in the article? That happens to me all the time, um, especially if you're super niche. Um, it's an amazing snowball effect. So how you pitch, I think one of the biggest secrets in PR world, and I really hope all 200 of you or so that are still here, most of you don't know about this because if you don't, this is going to blow your mind. Hero is a website I've been using for the last several years. It's called helpareporterout.com. It is free. How it works is three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. I get an email with all different um, journalists and media people who are looking for sources for stories, okay? It'll be like, I'm looking to talk to a coach who can talk about how COVID is impacting um, our therapists, how COVID is impacting how couples are stuck at home together all the time. And you can see that. And if you're a relationship therapist or a psychologist of some kind, you can be like, amazing. And you can say, hey, I know a lot about this. I'd love to be featured in your story. So that's just one example. I've seen so many different things like that, you know, just by nature of like the news cycle and what people are talking about. It's like CBD and COVID. You can, if you have an expertise in that, I know there's some people here that are in the cannabis industry, you know, get on Harrow and start saying, hey, I can be a source for that story. Um, it really can be that easy. You're not going to get accepted for all pitches, but I surprisingly get accepted too many. And you can start being really efficient where you have your answers saved in a notepad and you just kind of paste them every time. So Harrow is a great tool as well as existing blogs. So what I like to do is when I'm doing public publicity work for a client, let's say, so I had a company, they were in the oral hygiene space and they had a product and they wanted to get that featured in a ton of different gift guides. Well, a process that I did is I found different gift guides from a previous year and I found the author and I just pitched them and I said, hey, this is an amazing article you wrote. One, if you're ever looking to update this existing blog, I'd love for you to add my business. Or two, if you're creating another one, maybe Mother's Day is coming up and you have a cool offer, or maybe you know, you're know you in the health and wellness space and it's 2020 resolutions coming, get ahead of that news cycle, pitch those bloggers and say, I'd love to raise my hand and be included as a so source for your story. That works surprisingly well. These people are busy. It's a great way for you to get those backlinks, build some awareness of your um, business, and then showcase that you're an expert. Look at all this media that I'm featured in. The third I'm linking here too, and you're going to get this deck pretty quickly after this presentation, which is just wrapping up now, is you can join directories that are looking for guests. This one is specifically a website where you can be on different podcasts. 
um, which is really great because you can just wear whatever. I had to get ready for this webinar today, but when I do my podcast, you know, it's pretty low maintenance for me. And these are people who are looking to have different industry experts on their shows. So you can create a free profile and see who wants to interview on their podcast. So that's PR and media. That's the sixth marketing and sales strategy that I wanted to talk about today. I want to continue the conversation with you. So I have a couple offers. One is I have a Facebook group, um, Freedom Lifestyle, What's Your Free? You can join the community. I've talked a lot about Facebook groups today. Mine has no rules. Some Facebook groups have different rules where you can only post on certain days or you can't post about certain types of businesses. Mine is for online entrepreneurs and freedom seekers. So join it, share your offer, collaborate with people. I'm so for that. Right after this, I'm going to go on Instagram and I'm going to go on my Facebook group and start accepting people or replying my DMs to anybody who has a follow up question. Um, I do follow back. So please check me out on Instagram. Or if you want to brainstorm some next steps with you, I am a seller on Fiverr and that's my link to actually book a 20 minute call with me where we can dive deeper and have a really customized session on any of these topics and figure out what means for you and something you can do. Again, there's like 200 people on this conversation today. So many more people registered. So it's a lot of diverse online businesses. I can only customize it so much, but I would love to chat with you one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, Natasha's back. Hey, Sam. Well, thank you so much. That was amazing. I got to tell you, I've been in marketing for about 10 years now, and I have learned so much through the past hour. So I'm super really? excited you were able to share all this knowledge with our community and you know what i've been following all of the chats and all of the questions um and so i can tell how engaged everyone is like we mentioned we're gonna be we're recording this so we're gonna uh, send it um we're probably gonna send it to you towards the beginning of next week including the deck and the guides and the store and the recording um so don't worry if you don't get it right away um, what we did do is prepare a few questions um, for Sam to answer. So we're going to dive right into that because I know we're already out of time. So we're going to go um, right ahead and then uh, we'll wrap things up. Sure. So first question for you, Sam, is how can I make meaningful connections with potential customers online? So I think this really goes to the point in the conversation about community building and networking online. So utilizing things like Facebook groups, paid memberships or masterminds, which are at their foundation set up for making meaningful connections online, which is so amazing. You don't even have to build this stuff yourself. Going back to the opportunity of going online is there's that technological foundation. There's also that community foundation of people that are already doing this, where you can now jump in, you can build these meaningful conversations. I would say, be helpful, be generous with your advice and what you share and what you can know. Um, and be personal. Don't be afraid to showcase your personality and talk about things that aren't just business. Um, these are, this is how people are doing business today. It's through people they know, people they like, and people they trust. I love that. Thank you, Sam. Okay, so the next question we got um, is, how can I differentiate my products or services in a really crowded industry? What advice do you have? I think when you're in a really crowded industry, it's going to require you differentiating your approach and your style. So everyone, let's say offers, let's assume everyone in your industry is offering the exact same offer and everyone is equally qualified. Okay. You have to go into online business with that assumption. So when it comes to differentiating yourself, you don't want to always have to differentiate yourself on price, right? You don't want to always have to say, okay, I'm going to lower my prices in order to get that deal. That's not empowering. And that's not what you need to be doing. It's about how do you stand out? So this is when you can showcase what is your unique approach to offering that service? Yes, it might be the same in terms of the content, but you do this thing differently. Um, maybe it's an experience that they have when they work with you, or maybe it's a fun personal touch that you do with every single client where you do something before the session even starts. Figure out small little touches that are memorable as well as kind of break the script because most people aren't doing it. That's how you're going to differentiate a very um, crowded space and similar type of product from someone else. Great advice. Thanks. Okay, and the last question that I have for you is, so we've spoken about a lot about online content. Um, how can I host an online presentation or event for a global audience, not just local? 
Like, well, this is kind of what we're doing today. So I think you have a lot of advice on, on this topic too, but from like a technological standpoint, Zoom is my go-to in terms of having slides as well as having your video. You know, we had this chat in here. So there was some Q and A, you were able to connect with each other. You were able to send some questions to me. So I really, really like Zoom from a technological standpoint, but then how do you actually market it? And how do you actually get people to say yes to it, whether it's paid or whether it's free? Um, there's two tips that I would say to a global audience. One, time zones or irrelevant. You know, back when we were doing business face to face, you would say six o'clock is the best time for my ideal customer. So that's when my session is going to be. Well, now anyone from anywhere around the world is able to do this presentation. So advertise that you're going to offer a replay. Let them know like, hey, it's scheduled at this time. This is when I'm going to be online. But if you miss it, no problem. I think make that up and clear right from the beginning so people know that. And then I would say the second, mostly like a pro tip for marketing an event is don't just put your event on your actual website. So also put your event on Eventbrite, also put your event on Facebook events. These are platforms that are naturally marketing events. They're suggesting events to people and they're places where people are going when they're looking for presentations and webinars. So utilize those as well. Those are some great tips and we'll make sure to do all of that for the next webinar. <laughs> I really want to hear enough. Like, um, I, I know I can just see from the comments how helpful all of the information you provided has been um, and will continue to be. And just like Sam mentioned, she's going to be on Instagram. You can go to her Facebook gro group. Um, she's also a seller on Fiverr. And most importantly, um, you know, we have lots of community events. We're here for you. We really want to help you um, through your digital transformation getting your service, your skill, your business from offline to online. And we have lots of events. So feel free to go to um, events.fiverr.com. Um, if you're a seller on Fiverr, then you can also go to our forum. Um, and that's it for today. So we hope you have a great day and we look forward to hearing from you. Um, and keep a lookout for the follow-up next week with all the relevant information. So thanks so much. And thank you, Sam. Yeah, I'd love to stay connected. I'll be online now on my Facebook group and Instagram. So definitely check me out and we can continue the conversation literally right now. <laughs> awesome. Bye, guys. Bye.